This video is an introduction to momentum and impulse. First, we'll start with what exactly is momentum. Momentum is one of the quantities in physics that you have talked about in your everyday life, even though you might not be quite sure about how to define it. We say that something has a lot of momentum when it's running, or maybe if we have a big car that's traveling down a road, it has a lot of momentum. Usually when we're talking about momentum, we're talking about something that's moving. And so you might get the idea that it has something to do with movement, and it does. If I think about what factors momentum depends on, I think about the fact that usually when something's going fast, it has a lot of momentum. So one of those factors is velocity. Again, thinking about when I talk about something having a lot of momentum, often I think about if it's big, it has a lot of momentum. Like a truck rolling down a hill has a lot more momentum than a car rolling down a hill. Well, the quantity that would be different between a truck and a car is mass. These are the two quantities that momentum depends on, velocity and mass. Momentum, I still haven't quite defined it yet. It's not something that's easy to define. As a matter of fact, in physics, we define momentum with its equation. Momentum, which is represented by the letter P, it's a lowercase p. I don't really know why we use P, we just do. Momentum is an object's mass times its velocity. That's its definition. You'll notice that I used vector symbols here. Momentum is a vector, so we do need to pay attention to direction. But it does have the same direction as velocity. Since mass is a positive scalar, it can't change the direction at all. Looking at units, we know mass, the standard unit, is kilograms. And for velocity, the standard unit is meters per second. Therefore, the units for momentum are kilograms meters per second. Now, you're probably expecting me to say that we call that something different, just like I did with newtons and joules. For some reason in the physics world, we don't have another name for kilogram meters per second. That's just what it is. Those are the units. Let's take a look at a problem that uses this equation. In this problem, Hannah claims she can throw a 0.145 kilogram softball with as much momentum as a 3 gram bullet moving with a speed of 1,500 meters per second. So it asks, what must the baseball's speed be if Hannah's claim is valid? Well, to be able to determine that, I need to figure out how much momentum that bullet has. Now I mentioned that mass has to be in kilograms, and this gives us the mass of the bullet in grams. So I'll convert that. I get 0 .003 kilograms when I convert that, times its velocity. 1,500 meters per second. This gives me a momentum of 4.5 kilogram meters per second. I want to know how fast does the baseball have to be going to have this momentum. So velocity is momentum divided by mass, or 4.5 kilogram meters per second divided by the mass of that baseball or softball, 0.145 kilograms. I end up with a velocity of 31 meters per second. Now you might be wondering if this is realistic. Well, using Google, you can convert from meters per second to miles per hour. So I converted this number and I got about 69 miles per hour. That's a pretty reasonable speed for a pitcher to throw a softball. So, her claim is valid. It also asks which has greater kinetic energy, the ball or the bullet. 
Well, that's a concept from the previous chapter. We know kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. Well, we know the mass of each object. We know the velocity of each object. Pause the video right now and figure out the kinetic energy of each of them. You should have found that the kinetic energy of the soft ball is 69.8 joules and the kinetic energy of the bullet is 3,375 joules. Clearly the bullet has a lot more kinetic energy than the softball in this case. So that's momentum. Momentum is a fairly simple concept. But we use momentum in some complex ways. One example of that is something called impulse. Now to understand the idea of impulse, I want to think about a couple of things first. One of those things I want to think about is how could you change an object's momentum? Well, we said momentum was equal to mass times velocity. Now, we don't commonly change something's mass. That's usually pretty constant. But velocity is something that we do change fairly often. So to change something's momentum, momentum, we'd have to change its velocity. Well, changing its velocity means that it has an acceleration. So how do we get something to accelerate? That should be clear to you as well. We apply a force. So to change something's momentum, we need to apply a force to that object. Okay, here's another question. When a force is exerted on an object, does a large force always produce a larger change in the object's momentum than a small force does? What do you think, yes or no? Take a minute to, to reason to yourself why you think the answer is yes or no. Well, here's a thought process or a thought experiment. Think of yourself as if you're driving. Well, when you're driving, you use the gas pedal to change your velocity, right? You have to apply a force to that gas pedal. So here's two examples. Let's say that you slam down the gas pedal and you immediately take your foot off. That would be applying a very large force. As opposed to, let's say you apply a very small force, you're kind of lightly touching it, but you keep that small force applied for a long period of time. Which one's going to cause you to go faster? Well, if you've ever actually tried it, that small force is going to cause you to go faster than slamming your foot on the gas pedal. The difference between those two examples that I just gave you was the amount of time that it took. The answer to this question is no. A large force does not always produce a larger change in the object's momentum because it also depends on the amount of time that force is applied. This is the concept of impulse. Impulse is equal to the force times the amount of time in which that force is applied. An important theorem in physics says that the impulse the force times the amount of time that force is applied is equal to the change in an object's momentum. We know that a change in anything is final minus initial. So force times time is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. This is a very important law in physics. We will discuss in class a little bit about why this uh, theory is so important in how it relates to our lives.
But for now, let's move on to an example problem. In this problem, we're talking about a volleyball. It approaches Anna horizontally with a speed of 15 meters per second. And Anna strikes the ball with her fist and causes the ball to move in the opposite direction with a speed of 22 meters per second. We're looking to find the impulse delivered to the ball. And we're also going to eventually find the force that is exerted on her fist. So for starters, in part A, it asks us to find the impulse, which I mentioned was force times time. Well, we don't know the force yet, and so we're going to use the impulse momentum theorem, which says that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So the change in momentum is what we're going to look for here. We said change in momentum was final minus initial. And momentum is mass times velocity. So I have mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity. Since there's a mass in both of these two terms, I'm going to pull that out just to make my life a little bit easier. Now the problem tells us that the volleyball has a mass of 0.28 kilograms. The final velocity, uh, it says it's of 22 meters per second. And the initial velocity was 15 meters per second. Now, I've purposefully made a little mistake here to kind of show you how important it is to read the problem. There's a phrase in the problem that I've ignored. That phrase is that it moves in the opposite direction. So moving in the opposite direction means that I need to indicate that somehow with my velocities. I'm going to assume the way it was moving first was in the positive direction. And so the final velocity would be in the negative direction. Plugging these numbers into my calculator, I find that the impulse is equal to 10 0.4 kilogram meters per second. And we said that the momentum is a vector, and so impulse is also a vector. It does need a direction. And I would say that this direction is opposite because it would have a negative sign when I calculated it. Opposite the direction the ball was originally traveling. Okay, so that's part A. Part B asks us to actually find the force. So now that I know what the change in momentum is, I can use the impulse to be able to find the force. Force is equal to the change in momentum divided by time. Change in momentum, we said, was 10.4 kilogram meters per second. And technically, that's a negative. And it told me that it took 0 0.06 seconds to change this momentum like that. I end up getting a force equal to 173 newtons, negative 173 newtons. But if I look at the problem, it specifically said what is the magnitude of the average force. And we know magnitudes can never be negative. So my answer to this problem is a positive 173 newtons. I have one more problem for you to try, but this one I want you to try on your own. It talks about a car being stopped in traffic. Try this, write out your work in your notes, and bring it to class with you the next time we meet.